In the time before time, or at least 2002, Gavin Menzies wrote the book 1421 to inform the world that China managed to discover America before Columbus without anyone else noticing, which challenged the way world history was written and brought Menzies many eager followers. But then, along came a force of darkness across the land. Academia. Focusing on small, unimportant things like bad citations, mistranslations, and unrelated or false evidence. Academia ridiculed Menzies' work, destroying his reputation. But then, when all hope was lost, Menzies made a website to allow his fans to challenge the evil academia by providing random, unrelated evidence of their own. With such efforts, academia was proven a fool and pseudo-history finally won, giving Gavin Menzies hope to try another book to turn history on its head once again. With 1421 being a huge success, it was only natural that Gavin Menzies would try another book. If you thought China discovering the Americas before Columbus was a wonderful book clickbait, well, Gavin found a way to outdo himself. In 2008, Gavin Menzies released his second book titled 1434, The Year a Magnificent Chinese Fleet Sailed to Italy and Ignited the Renaissance. Now, I know what you're thinking. Didn't the Renaissance start before that? Well, it's actually kind of complicated. The Renaissance is basically a transition period in European history of going from medieval times to early modern times. We associate it with its beautiful paintings, sculpture, music, pope antics, leaning towers, and so on, but it wasn't just like a fashion trend that came one century and went. The ideas that would lead to the Renaissance we view of in pop culture had their start in the 1300s or even the late 1200s, but were more full force in the 1400s and 1500s. So, some people argue the Renaissance refers to the period between 1400 and 1600. Others say it should be a longer Renaissance and start in the year 1300, which is the date I remember being taught in school at least. Either way, the idea of the Chinese jump-starting the Renaissance in 1434 may technically fall within the time period of the Renaissance, but jump-starting implies that they jolted Italy and it started with them. And that ignores all of the influential figures before that clearly had their impact on the Renaissance like Dante, Masaccio, and Donatello. So already I can't imagine how Gavin Menzies is going to frame this unless this is just book clickbait exaggerating again. But then again, his previous book did the opposite by actually claiming more than what the title claimed. So what do I know? But before we get into the book, I'd like to talk about this video's sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet modernizes the idea of a wallet by foregoing the leather wallet for a more sleek and simple metal design. You can fit all of your cards in between and easily pop them out whenever you need them, and cash can be easily attached on the back with this strap. Also, unlike with leather, there are way more styles you can get your wallet in with Ridge as well, although I'm still partial to my blue one that I've been using now for several years. They're durable and convenient, so I'm certainly not giving mine up. If you go to their website with the link below and use the code EMPEROR, then you can get 15% off your own Ridge wallet today, so be sure to get one. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. In his introduction, Menzies woes that the young are misled and is glad his book and website are bringing the truth to light. He then claims that the most common criticism he's received is that he didn't talk enough about the Chinese visiting Italy during the Renaissance. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that was the biggest complaint you got. Menzies then asserted that the work of Tai Pei Wan had proven that China visited Italy during the Renaissance with delegations in the early 1400s. Now, this was news to me, so I decided to see what this guy was talking about. I looked up Tai Pei Wan, and Gavin Menzies' own website had a PDF of his paper titled The Papacy in Ancient China. It's formatted rather horribly, it even autocorrects eight in parentheses as the sunglasses emoji, but at least it's something. The paper asserts a delegation from the treasure fleets led by Jean He visited the papacy to meet with Pope Eugene IV in 1433. 
It also asserts that the papacy had been appointing cardinals over Beijing since the late 1300s. Firstly, for the papacy appointing cardinals to Beijing, it is true that they did try in the 1300s, but the diocese over Beijing ended in 1375, due to a lack of success, shall we say. Secondly, the supposed meeting between Pope Eugene IV was based on an offhanded remark from an Italian cartographer named Paolo de Pozzo Toscanelli in a letter to Christopher Columbus. While this letter does appear to mention a man from Cathay, which is what most Europeans called China at this time, meeting with Pope Eugene, the authenticity of this letter has been constantly debated. Mostly because it seems weird an official delegation with the Pope, the leader of Western Christendom, being met by an official delegation of the largest empire of East Asia, something that had never fully happened previously, isn't found anywhere else outside of this letter. Surely either the papacy or China would be boasting about such a monumental feat of medieval diplomacy or an important event in their history, right? But okay, let's assume this letter is authentic and Toscanelli is telling the truth. Taipei Wan's paper over this claimed visit would still not make logical sense. China and Italy definitely knew of each other's existence, yes, but that's not the same thing as sending delegations and cardinals back and forth on a regular basis. More importantly, though, this paper implies that the visit of 1434 specifically happened during a trip led by Zhang He. Zhang He famously led the treasure fleets of the Ming Dynasty to several places in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans to conduct trade, diplomacy, and collect tribute for China. He went many places, but Europe was not one of them. Gavin Menzies, in his first pseudo-history book, 1421, claimed that China's supposed discovery of America was during the Sixth Voyage. If Zhang He was then going to Italy, then it would have had to have been on his seventh voyage that he started in 1431. This was his final voyage, as afterwards the Ming Dynasty famously closed itself off and stopped producing the fleets. Now, Zhen He's voyage took two and a half years of going from China to India to the Red Sea to Somalia, then back home. Considering there was no Suez Canal yet, any round trip to the Mediterranean would not have only gotten noticed by other European nations, aside from the papacy, but would have without a doubt taken another year or two to accomplish, and couldn't have been done within the time span of the Seventh Journey. By the way, the seventh journey ended in 1433, and this book is titled 1434. Now wait a minute, some of you might be saying, sometimes older dates aren't solid, so do we know for sure the voyage ended in 1433? Yes, we do, because Zhen He and his crew were in China on July 1433. There were recorded celebrations of his return and the end of his journey. And remember, there was no eighth journey. That was it. But did he perhaps maybe do an eighth journey anyway that we don't know about? I don't see how Zhang He would get an entire envoy of imperial treasure fleets to Rome without the emperor noticing, but from what we know, Zhang He died in either 1433 or 1435. Even if we accept the 1435 date of his death, he couldn't have gotten home in time, and we do definitively know he died in Nanjing. Would one and a half years be enough to go from Nanjing to Rome and back in time for him to die? Based on how long the other journeys took, the answer is once again, no. Besides all of that, 1434 the book insists that this is the seventh and final voyage anyway. The whole premise of the book is basically absurd and shown to not be based on any reliable evidence or logic, and we haven't even gotten past the first asserted source in the introduction of the book. Also, oh wow, look at that, Juan's paper cites Gavin Menzies' book 1421, what a coincidence. Does the book really have anything that can somehow still make this supposed journey be remotely possible? Well, the answer is obviously no, but reading the rest of the book does have its annoying moments to note. Firstly, remember that even though Gavin Menzies' book 1421 was thoroughly debunked by many historians, Gavin Menzies is still convinced he's right, so throughout the book, there are moments where he'll reference the Chinese trip to the Americas as if it actually happened, and is an already established fact when it's not. Oh, and he also talks about the false Chinese journey near the North Pole, too. <sighs> yeah, he claimed that, too. Uh, I talked about it more in the 1421 video. It technically wasn't going to the North Pole so much as along the Arctic route north of Eurasia, but it's still very absurd. And overall, implying those things are true when they're not is very distracting. The further you go into a pseudo-historical universe, the more it simply circular cites its own ideas to keep digging deeper. 
One small chapter, however, was interesting enough in that it claimed that Jun He actually didn't go around Africa to get to Rome, but rather used a canal through Egypt. Now, the Suez Canal obviously didn't exist yet, so how is that possible? Gavin Menzies states that the fleet went through the Nile Red Sea Canal, also known as the Canal of the Pharaohs. Now, one might say this makes the timing more possible, that Jun He could have managed to pull off a visit to Europe on the seventh journey. Jun He on the seventh journey did even go through the Red Sea to visit Mecca. So does this fix the timing issue? No, because the book is still implying that Jun He visited Rome in 1434, which is still after the journey ended. So this potential shortcut already doesn't fix any of the larger holes in the logic of this theory. Furthermore, there are still several problems with implying they used the Red Sea to Nile Canal. It had been cut off and no longer used for trade route purposes. The history of this canal brings its use to an end in the 8th century to prevent supplies from reaching rebels near Medina at the time. The canal soon withered from disuse and turned into just marshland. There is evidence that it still flooded with Nile overflow, seasonally, which led to parts of the canal being used for irrigation, but certainly not for bringing across entire fleets of treasure ships. Notably, when Gavin Menzies talks about the history of this canal, he has citations for talking about its ancient history, he has citations for the post-17th century excavations of it, but the area where he talks about the canal supposedly still being used for trade after the 700s has no footnote citations. Interesting. Notably, he discusses about the Egyptian Sultan al-Malik al nasir reopening this canal in 1337, which required 100,000 men. This is strange, considering that just about every other account of the Sultan's projects lists this major effort as not the Nile Red Sea Canal, but rather a canal between Alexandria and the Nile. This canal was even called the al khalij al nasiri in his name. It also happened in 1311, too. I couldn't find anything confirming a 1337 canal project of a similar or greater significance, except for websites citing, well, this book. Also again, even if this was true, I really think there would be more records of Jun He passing through Egypt along the Nile in Arabian or European sources. It seems like there'd be a significance with that sort of event. Somehow, no one in Cairo or Alexandria decided to go, oh wow, look at all these Chinese fleets, and it, they just all magically forgot about it somehow. Plus, if this canal was in use in the 1400s, then why wouldn't Columbus or other European explorers have used it to get a quicker route to the Indies? Again, it just makes no sense. But Gavin Menzies used this idea to add more pseudo-theories to his 1421 book by claiming that Jun He's map of the world already showing the Americas was copied in Alexandria and then sent throughout Europe. He then claims that the people from Dubrovnik in modern-day Croatia use the maps to settle near Roanoke and are the people the colonists refer to as Croatan? Gavin Menzies thinks that the Croatan, a Native American tribe that was described historically as such, and that still exists today, were Croatian? I, uh, I, I'm dead. Like, how? Why? Like, uh, my brain hurts. Gavin Menzies eventually discusses the Chinese visiting Italy, and apparently their way of jump-starting the Renaissance was by supposedly giving the Italians advanced math, astronomy, and geographical knowledge. He even has a chapter where he claims Leonardo da Vinci's sketches for his inventions were all actually based on what China showed off in Italy, because how else could his drawings be so precise? It's not like da Vinci was a genius or anything. I mean, look, China had gears centuries before Europe did. Therefore, there's no other possible way that Leonardo da Vinci could have conceived of a circle with protruding triangles in it. There's just no way. China had a legend about a man flying with man-made wings. There's no other way Leonardo da Vinci could have come up with such a novel concept. It's not like there are any ancient European legends about the same thing like Daedalus and Icarus, right? Gavin Menzies concludes that chapter by basically saying he finds it hard to believe it's all a coincidence. Well, believe it or not, a lot of ideas can be thought of by multiple groups of people at different times without being aware of each other. It's why there are different places that became civilizations that had architecture, farming, simple machines, basic weapons, and so on. We're not even talking about ideas or inventions as complex as computer technology or rocket science here. The Chinese civilization was amazing and came up with many things and beat Europe to the punch on several major inventions. That does not mean that the Chinese did everything. 
I could go on about the other ways Menzies is claiming China jump-started the Italian Renaissance, but none of it even matters because the Renaissance was already happening, the voyages never went to Europe through a canal that wasn't in use, and the year after the final journey ended and Jun He was already dead. There is not a single mention of anything about Jun He's death or the contradiction of official records showing his seventh journey ended in July of 1433 in Beijing. Although Menzies does have a chapter claiming the voyages only stopped because a tsunami destroyed the entire fleet, and somehow the China that he claims discovered every continent and jump-started the Renaissance just couldn't bring itself to build more ships anymore. Right. Well, unlike Menzies' first book, 1421, this was not as much of a bestseller. Most people had rightfully realized he was not a legitimate historian. But Menzies did have enough of a following to where his second book was certainly not his last. But that'll be for another episode. Until then, I'm Emperor Tigerstar, and I'll see you guys next time. Special thanks to all of my wonderful patrons. I've made it my goal to finally make YouTube my full-time job by the end of the year, and it's my patrons who help me reach that goal and make it possible to do more videos like this one. Any bit of support is greatly appreciated.